All right, in this video, I'm going to go over the dependency graph feature with you and show you how powerful this can be to help you actually see the big picture of your code. So I've got a project here that I've already opened and to see the dependency graph for, I'm going to come up to graphs, come to dependency graphs and by directory structure. This is my Pixie project. And within this, I've got each of these entities we can see here in the white boxes. The 3D white box tells us there's more inside. There's more entities inside each of these. So if I double click, I can see everything here inside of source. That's a little bit too zoomed in. So let me zoom out. There we go. That's better. So about 75% here. I can see most of the entities. The uh, blue lines here between the entities indicates dependence. The red lines indicate mutual dependence. If I look at file, I see I've got 28 dependencies on common. And then if I come to a red line with RI, I've got 22 dependencies on SDR. And SDR has 12 dependencies on RI. So that's how you read these graphs. Each of the white boxes within source is known as a child because I'm looking inside of source. So if I come up to the graph feature up here, this gives me all the graph options. I can say show select and no children, show edges between children. And there's a lot of different options that I have to be able to look or focus in differently on different parts of this graph. So let's take a look here at common. I see most of the entities here are dependent on common and I wanna see inside of it. So I'll double click. Now I've got a lot of complexity, a lot of different uh, dependencies coming in and going out. So to make this a little bit simpler, what I'm going to do here is come up and say aggregate child edges coming in. So all the edges coming from entities outside of common will be grouped and you'll see them coming in, coming to the box, but not into it. So it gives me just a simpler view of all my entities here. Now, if I want to be able to see one of my entities here and um, where that is in the actual source code, what I need to do is view the dependency browser. So let me click on os.cpp just once. I'll come up to the link button, click on that, and that opens up my dependency browser. If I click on the little icon here, that's gonna bump it in uh, to the dock down here. Now it tells me there are 13 dependencies. And if I'm coming down lower into the project level, pixie source common, there we go. Breaking it down inside of common, I can see individual uh, entities down here. If I wanna see where global is in the source, I can just double click on that and that takes me right to the source code. I can uh, bump out my dependency browser if I wanna be able to see more of the source. Oh, let's try that again, there we go. Uh, and then if I want to come back to my graph, I can just click the tab here. Let me go ahead and close out the dependency browser. Uh, now, if I want to be able to look at something else here, uh, maybe uh, come back a step from what we were looking at, I can just say back and it takes it back one step. Now, if I want to be able to filter further inside of common and look at just the calls, I can come up to my filter icon here and say calls. Now, when I click off of that, it's gonna update my graph and I'm looking at just the calls uh, inside of common as well as outside. So if I want to select and operate on just a particular set of entities, I need to select that. Uh, but if I wanna select or operate on the entire graph, um, then I just make sure I'm not selecting those entities and uh, the graphing features will work accordingly. Remember, if I wanna go back and forward, I can use my arrows. Um, if I've created a graph, uh, let's go back to this particular view uh, where I'm looking at the calls. If I want to save this for future use so I don't have to come back in, create this graph and then filter it um, down to the calls, what I can do is just come up here to the save icon. I can give it a name, common calls graph. I can save that. Then when I close out all of this, as if I was opening this for the first time, I can come up to graphs, dependency graphs, load save dependency graph, come down and I can find my common call graph there. I can open that and I'm back to that view. If I want to share this particular graph, I've got a couple different options. Uh, I can print that out or save it as a PDF. Or if I've, if I've got Visio, I can come in here, say export to Visio XML. Uh, if there are other things inside of the Pixie project that I want to look at, I've already made a lot of edits. It wouldn't really make sense to just 
click back a million times on this. A uh, simpler option is just to come up here and uh, click this uh, default browser view, and that takes me back uh, to the Pixie project and restores all the defaults. So as long as I'm not filtering by calls, let me deselect that, then as I click back into source, here we go, there's the original view there. I'm back to Pixie. So that's a brief overview of the dependency graph feature inside of Understand. Like I said, it's incredibly useful, but if you do have questions about how to use it or specific use cases, please don't hesitate to shoot us an email. You can contact us at support at scitools.com or for more information about Understand and other features, you can go to scitools.com support.